Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Blue Wahoo's broadcaster, Eric Bramer, joining you for another edition of Wahoo Weekly. Last week was such a busy week with Fish Fest and our community appearances, we had too much content to show you in just one episode. That makes my job this week easy. I'm just enjoying some sunny weather out on Community Maritime Park, and this week we're going to show you some of the Q&A highlights that we didn't get a chance to show you last week. So enjoy my conversations with Team President Jonathan Griffith, hitting coach Matt Snyder, our special player guests Will Banfield and Griffin Conine, and Pensacola's own Jordan McCants. See you in a bit. Uh, I know that a couple weeks ago we announced that we were joining 29 of the 30 major league ballparks in going cashless, and I wanted to hear straight from you uh, the rationale behind that and what you think that will do to improve the fan experience. Yeah, Eric told me to, so we'll ask him. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no. Um, it, you know, that's something that we've been working on since probably 2018, 2019, um, and it just, as the years came on, as much as I dragged my feet to do it, it, it finally became a time to do it. Um, you know, the biggest, uh, my biggest thing that I think the benefit of it is more than anything, and I try not to talk about the economics of it, but it's really, you know, last year was the toughest year we ever had as an organization with cost of goods. You know, cost of goods, if you own a business, heard about business, whatever, we're all in the same boat. The problem we have here at, at the Blue Wahoos, not only are we dealing with that, but we can't get change. Literally, no bank, nobody will give us enough change to run. We normally need about $10,000 in change, like coins, per day to be, able, to be able to run. And we weren't able to get them. So we had to do whole dollars. So if you notice, everything was to the dollar what we had to do. The downside of that is when we got a cost of good that went up, let's just say 5%, well, I had a choice. <laughs> do I go up a whole dollar or do I lose 5%? Then once it gets to a certain number, I, we would eventually make the decision, hey, we're going to have to go up the dollar, where it just, it almost doesn't feel right, but you got to, it's business, right? This way with us going, my biggest win on this is that by going cashless, if it goes up 5%, we just pass it on. It's a, it's a simple pass on. Compared to having to go up a whole dollar, we can go up 5 cents, 10 cents, whatever it may be. Um, so that's the biggest benefit I see. Of course, with the speed of service, all studies show, I can't tell you we're going to be as fast on the start because I, that's the other thing I want to remind everybody. For six months, our people have not worked, <laughs> like as far as having a lot of fans there. So imagine doing your job, stopping for six months, and then being at 100% on opening day or your first day back at work. Our first day back at work, there's 5,000 people there, and they all want to be served right away. Not giving excuses, it's just a fact of life. And we, by that first weekend, we're humming. Our wait lines go way down. But that first one, is, it's going to be bad. Um, it's bad every year. Our scores are bad every year, <laughs> the same thing. Um, and we know it, and as much as we try to do it, so we're hoping that the, the, um, the service of cashless will make that faster. And like I said, we've looked at every study to do it. The Bay Center did it about a year ago. <clears throat> some other places, we actually traveled around to some other ballparks to see how their operations work, just to show like what, what right looks like and how, how do we get to that point. Um, so we're hoping that that will do that. Um, you know, some folks had talked about, well, it's gonna cost us more money. It does not, it actually cost us because we have to pay the credit card fees, which we're willing to do because we think it's worth it. We think that speed of service and being able to do that will get there. Um, but it, it's one of those things we have. Now, here's the great thing. We still take cash. <laughs> we will still take anybody's cash. You just go to the team store or to the um, Hill Kelly uh, ticket window there, and we're able to take the cash, exchange it for a gift card, and you can use it anywhere and everywhere around. You can even get it reloaded if you want to. So if you don't want to carry a credit card or carry a you know bank card, whatever, you don't need to. We can have a credit uh, gift card. Our gift cards, by the way, hand, uh, state of Florida, <laughs> Gift cards never go bad, just FYI, um, but ours don't never go bad. So it's one that if you have a gift card, even from when you were a season ticket holder in 2020 and you had that gift card, you can reload that, use the um, gift card as well. So, you know, we, we try to make it as friendly as possible, but we just need to make the move. And, you know, we first started the ticket list one. Um, that was tough because it was change, um, but by the end of it, we got through it. 
Um, this year with the tickets, we are actually going to go back to the card, like a credit card, just so people had – a lot of people still wanted that something, right? So you can still use your phone, but you'll have a card if you're a, a, a something person. So you can have that as well. We're getting them to be on your keychain, like the, you know, like the Winn-Dixie little deal kind of thing. Um, so we're trying to do different things to be as customer-friendly and, you know, speed of service as possible. Um, we feel it's going to – it's the right move, the right time to do it. Um, and I, I just think once we get through this year, everybody's going to say, why did they ever take cash? At least that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> well, let's talk about your professional career, uh, a long minor league playing career that ended in the Marlins organization, yeah. reaching as high as the AAA level just down the road in New Orleans. And then the Marlins said, hey, you would make a good coach, and then you became a coach. So what was that process like? And uh, after a couple years, how are you enjoying that transition from playing to coaching? Oh, man, if you, if you know anything about my past with baseball, uh, there's a lot of injuries, a lot of pain. So uh, one thing about coaching has been uh, it's amazing. I have a lot less pain. Um, <laughs> And so, uh, but uh, you know, so yeah, so I, my, my last season playing was uh, with the New Orleans Baby Cakes. Um, obviously not a team anymore. We're in Jackson, but now in AAA. Uh, I, uh, let's see, I tore a hamstring that season. And then I, uh, my last rehab game down in Jupiter, I broke my foot. And so, um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I probably should have had a uh, rabbit's foot in my pocket when I was playing, <laughs> but I didn't, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, so coaching has been, Amazing though. I mean, uh, to be able to um, to be able to see the guys develop and to see their dreams start to come true, and to be able to see them uh, to move up levels and uh, be able to play the game that they love, and to know that I play a small part in being able to help them with uh, any kind of problems they have, whether it's injuries or uh, you know hitting is the hardest thing in sports to do. So if they have anything, you know, it can kind of be a little bit of a mental thing, you know. So sometimes to be able to walk them through things and be able to guide them out of that kind of stuff and get them back to being the guy they are and to go back to having fun is awesome. So. Talk about the new guys. I'm reluctant on the broadcast to use the word prospect because that's a very reductive term in the world of minor league baseball. As you well know, a team requires all 28 players and whether or not someone online thinks that you're a prospect or not, that doesn't really matter. But you are a prospect, and that carries with it some weight, some cachet in the clubhouse. When you began your time in Pensacola in 2021, you were the new guy. But as the season went along last year, you became one of the veteran leaders on this team. And part of that was because of your on-field performance. How did you adjust to becoming one of those de facto leaders in the clubhouse? I think that comes to with uh, with all the younger guys coming up when you know I used to be the younger guy coming up and now it's kind of it comes full circle when you come up to a new team and then it's tough early on because you don't especially for me I was traded here so I uh, I didn't really know a lot of players to begin with um, all my you know former friends teammates were with the Blue Jays and uh, I'll admit I didn't do a great job of getting to meet everyone and introducing myself so when I came up to Pensacola in, in 21 um, there's a lot of new faces that I wasn't familiar with and this is late in the season so everyone's kind of battling their own slumps and you know whatever they're, they're kind of caught up so it was uh, just knowing how I felt then um, getting to kind of see players come up and knowing that they're probably feeling the same way I was and uh, just trying to help bridge the gap a little bit and you know tell them that you level up and I think double A is a big jump maybe the biggest that you make in the minors so uh, just helping the young guys deal with it and keeping the clubhouse light and you know it seems like a big deal being in double A but letting them know that it's just still the same game you know it just gets a little harder but uh, we had we had a really good clubhouse chemistry last year which um, I think is it helped the young guys out a lot. You took some steps forward with the bat, and I've talked with you about this before, but in case anyone doesn't know, you were one of our best hitters by the numbers in August, September, and certainly in the playoffs. Uh, what changes did you make to your approach or your philosophy that helped you unlock something at the plate? Yeah, just uh, back to, you know, the clubhouse and the, the team aspect of it, you know, having guys that, you know, wanted to play around each other, wanted to be together, and everybody was, you know, playing for the same reason to win. And, you know, a little confidence built up and kind of rolled with it for the last three months. And, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. And like I said, we were in some, you know, big situations where, 
you know, hitting is contagious, and guys were up at the plate battling, battling, and, you know, we knew the next guy up, if they didn't get it done, if I didn't get it done, they were going to get it done. We were going to score the runs that we needed to. So, um, you know, that was, that was a cool part of it, and, you know, hopefully do it again. You mentioned Pensacola, growing up in the Pensacola area. What helped you fall in love with the game of baseball, whether it was a person or a program or a place? Something had to trigger that in you. What was it? Uh, if anybody knows where Cantonment, Florida is, I got some folks out there from the country, too. I, uh, I'm from, My apartment hey, is up near there, too. So. Hey, I'm from Cantonment, Florida. We play baseball, basketball, and football out there, but we won the World Series every year at Cantonment Ballpark when I was there and um, it just kind of made you fall in love because we used to win and like we always just off the field we were just friends and everything so just fell in love with the game doing that and then as you kept uh, moving forward playing travel ball and you uh, you make a lot of friends like you, like I just said but yeah you just fall in love with it with that way and then just just keep moving forward with it. You're back already? Gosh, 10 minutes goes by awfully fast when you're not doing anything. That's all we have for you for this week's edition of Wahoo Weekly. I promise that next week we'll be a bit more ambitious with some new content as we get ready for the 2023 season. Until then, this is Eric Bramer signing off. Thanks for watching.